Alright guys, BLM here, back with a new video. In this video, I will be talking about my opinions on Season 1 of The Amazing Race US after having just rewatched it for the first time. Now, last time I watched this season was when I was really young. I was, I think, like 5 or 6. I really don't remember the season too well, though. But I did decide to rewatch it because I am doing a full series rewatch of the show as, again, I've never done it before. And I was watching some clips of older seasons and it kind of made me want to revisit them. So here we go, season one. And I enjoyed season one. I thought season one, it just felt like a completely different show as it's like they were trying to figure out well, obviously what worked and what didn't. But what I find really strange about it is the fact that by season two, because I already started watching season two at this point, it pretty much is the show that we know now. So it's like, it's just season one that's like a massive outlier from the rest of the series. Now, during season one, there were actually some things that are different that I actually liked, but there were a lot of things obviously wrong, and I feel like they've learned their lessons from them since. So let's start with things that I didn't like. I, I do feel like some of the placements in the middle of the episodes were a bit hard to follow. You would rarely see an on-screen indicator of like where this team is relative to the other teams. I felt like that was kind of confusing. Phil not being at the pit stops unless you were the last team to arrive was just weird. I don't know why that decision was even made. Like, I mean, it's it's just really awkward that, like, when you get to the pit stop, the only person there is, like, the representative from that place. But, like, they're the ones that are telling you, like, what placement you are and everything. Like, it's, it's, it's really strange. And then when you're in last, like, and you see Phil, you automatically know that you're last. It really takes all the suspense out of the reveal that you've been eliminated. So I'm happy that they ended up changing this for season two. I did also find it strange how fast forwards were part of every episode. That's something I really didn't remember. And from what I understand, it does continue for the next few seasons. I didn't particularly like it here. The problem with season one is that once teams got a lead, they usually got to keep that lead because there were very few equalizers throughout the entire course. So because of that, whenever someone used the fast forward, it would usually greatly benefit them for more than just that one round. And I feel like this is something as a whole that production just completely overlooked during this first season. Like, it's like they didn't even think of the possibility that, like, a team could really just lag behind the rest of the other teams. I mean, unlike modern seasons, and, like, a season two, I already noticed that they do it a lot more. Again, there's equalizers. There's parts where, like, pretty much all the teams have to wait until, like, a certain thing opens up. Or they can all only get on, like, certain flights or something to that nature that makes it so... There's suspense, there's intrigue on who could be the one going home. But with this season, particularly towards the end of the season, a lot of that's gone. I mean, by the time we get to the last few episodes, it's very clear who the top two are going to be. And like, it's pretty much at the point where like, no one else even has a shot. And I felt bad for Team Guido, who got third place, but like, they didn't even get to come anywhere close to the finish line. They, like, they were still in, I believe it was Alaska, right? They're still in Alaska when they got a clue that said, oh... Rob and Brendan won the race. <laughs> like, it would be so awkward. But now let's talk about the episodes themselves. I thought the pacing here was pretty decent for the most part. One of my biggest issues with a lot of these older seasons of reality shows, stuff like Survivor Borneo and Big Brother 2, is the fact that the pacing is usually really, really slow. But I feel like Amazing Race doesn't have this issue, and I think a lot of that comes from just the nature of Amazing Race. I mean, Amazing Race is obviously... They're racing. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you would expect them to be going fast. And I feel like... The first half of the season was very strong because of that. I really enjoyed, again, the first few episodes I thought were fantastic. I thought there was a good amount of drama from the teams like uh, Paul and Amy and Lenny and Karen. And even Kevin and Drew in that first episode was fantastic. There's a surprising amount of strategy. I was actually surprised at how much strategy was involved in this first season where there were a lot of alliances being made. I mean, Team Guido also made a lot of strategic moves throughout the season and to be honest, Team Guido themselves are, is one of the few things I remembered from this season. The two things I remember from the season coming in were Team Guido and the fact that they came like around third or fourth or so. And I knew Rob and Brendan won. So I was kind of spoiled on the results. I mean, that's every season of Amazing Race. Like, I know certain things about every single season I'm going to be watching. But for the most part, this season just felt new to me. Like, it, it didn't worsen my experience on the season at all. I just watched it as if it was a new show of television. I did enjoy it. Now, my biggest complaint of this season is the fact that the back half of the season is pretty boring. I mean, the end of the season pretty much consists of every other leg being a non-elimination leg, which is annoying in itself. It really just drags the season out. 
And as I said before, Rod and Brendan and Frank and Margarita were just way ahead of the other teams that it became really blatant that one of those two teams were going to win and that no one else really had a shot. But now let's talk about the cast, which overall I really enjoyed. I mean, there were a couple duds here. I thought Matt and Anna brought nothing to the table. I thought Pat and Brenda brought little to the table. I mean, there were moments here and there, but for the most part, they're kind of forgettable. But I thought most of this cast was pretty entertaining. I mean, Kim and Lindsay, while they weren't the most entertaining team by themselves, I thought their rivalry with Paul and Amy was fun while they were there. Dave and Margarita were fun to watch for me as they kept on doing things wrong, yet it kind of ended up working out for them. And it's funny too, because they kept on getting like these penalties, like at the start of every leg, because it's like they couldn't even do like a roadblock correctly, but it's like they just ended up making it through anyway. I loved Paul and Amy on the show. I was really disappointed they went out in seventh. I mean, they were really dysfunctional, but they never really got personal, I don't feel like. Like, they were arguing all the time, but it never reached a certain level of negativity that it seems to always reach on The Amazing Race. And speaking of that negativity, we got Lenny and Karen, who I thought were pretty dysfunctional and did yell not-so-nice things at each other. I think it was mostly from Karen's point of view, but... I was surprised how far they made it. I mean, they had a f good first leg, but then, like, after that, they just crumbled, but somehow they still made it to sixth place, so whatever. Nancy and Emily, I was really surprised by. I was expecting them to be early boots. I thought they were really fun. They made it to the top five, despite never really doing too well on any particular leg. Uh, but I was disappointed with how they left, where Nancy pretty much just gives up, and they have a large enough time penalty to cause their eliminations. I mean, that kind of just sucks. But I thought they were fun on the show. I loved Kevin and Drew on this season as well. And again, I had almost no memory of this season. So when I saw them arguing in the first episode, I was expecting them to be an early boo as well. But they made it top four. And they had a very impressive mid-game where they had a few first place finishes. Uh, I thought they were fantastic characters. They were probably, I mean, outside of Team Guido, probably my favorite characters on the show. And I, I, from what I understand, they are on All-Stars. And I don't know how well they do on All-Stars. So I think it will be interesting to see that. Then we got to Team Guido, who I, I loved on the show. I mean, if it weren't for them, I don't know if I would enjoy this season as much as I did. They were easily the most strategic team on the race. They were definitely looked at as villains, like the villains of the season. But what's funny is that part of the time, they weren't even trying to be villains. It just so happened that circumstances made them look like villains. It was kind of funny. I, I, I enjoyed them. They are on All-Stars. I'm excited to watch them on there. I do have a good idea of how they do on All-Stars. But again, I'm excited to get to it when I get to it. Now for Frank and Margarita, who I thought were fine. I thought they were fun in the first few legs. But once they started to get along, I, I found them relatively boring. As they just consistently stayed towards the top of the pack. Never really had much trouble. But I did feel pretty bad for them when they lo obviously they lost over Rob and Brendan. And like when they're running towards the finish line thinking that they won. And they're like so confident. And then they see Rob and Brendan there. Like that, I mean, that would just suck. I mean, it really would. But uh, let, let's just get to Rob and Brendan now, the winners. Um, they're probably the most boring team to make it this far into the season. I mean, I think out of the top, I don't know, top seven, probably, they were easily the most boring team there. And because of that, I was kind of disappointed that they were the winners of the season because Amazing Race as a whole has a lot of winners of this sort of archetype, this alpha male, two bros sort of archetype. And obviously they were the first, but this is something that's kind of continued off the Amazing Race. As characters, again, Brendan, I mean, Brendan was fine. Brendan was like just an average guy. Like, but I couldn't even tell you a single thing about Rob. Like, I, I think Brendan got probably a good chunk of their airtime to the point where like, I, I couldn't even tell you anything about Rob at all. Like, I don't even know what his personality is. I don't really even know what his voice sounds like. But they were a strong team. I, I will give them that. They were a very strong team. They were consistently strong throughout the entire season. They won five legs. They were in the top three in all but two legs. They were good racers. And spoiler alert, I do know the, who the next few winners are. And based on what I know of them, I would say Rob and Brendan are probably at least the best winners for a little while. But again, they just weren't super entertaining. So there's that. So overall, I really did enjoy my rewatch of season one of The Amazing Race, though I, I don't know how it'll hold up after I end up watching every season afterwards. I feel like this happens every single time with all these reality shows when I do a full series rewatch, like when I was watching Survivor Borneo. I love Survivor Borneo, but then like after I watch every season afterwards, Survivor Borneo fell like towards the bottom of the pack. And the same thing with Big Brother 2. 
like it's just it's something that ends up happening with me when I watch the series from beginning to end is that by the end of it, those first few seasons end up being towards the bottom of the list. But I do think there's a legitimate criticism of season one here. Again, I think the first half is pretty fun, but again, the back half really dragged with more of a focus on these less interesting characters. So I, I do feel like by the end of my series rewatch, this season will more than likely be on the bottom half of the list, but it's still a season that I did enjoy. I am considering doing a video like this for future seasons, at least season two. Who knows about what I'm going to do after that, but I will definitely be doing a season ranking video after I finish my series rewatch. I don't know when that'll be. It'll probably be, I, I would guess, probably somewhere around two months from now. But yeah, I mean, that that's the video. That's my opinion on season one of The Amazing Race. So yeah, thank you for watching.